joining me right now is my good friend JT Sports right here. Of course, he is the founder of the JT um, Sports YouTube channel. He also has a podcast on podcasting platforms, which you can check out as well. He has over 10,000 subscribers. He's a guy that I've kind of gotten to know a little bit kind of, uh, you know, behind the scenes. He's my good friend JT Sports. Like I said, JT, thanks for joining the show. How you doing today, man? Hey, man, it's, it's, it's a good pleasure to be on the show with you, man. You know, it's been it's been a while, man, since I last been on here. Last time we was on here, you was talking crazy on my Steelers, man. You got you guys remember, man, put put a flashback in the episode when you disrespected the Pittsburgh Steelers and said that the Texans were going to be better than Pittsburgh. I will never forgive you for the disrespect. The disrespect, man. Like, can, can Steeler Nation get an apology from you? Because you never really properly apologize. You know, we're, we're never going to get one for Colin Coward. You know, still keeps taking jabs at Big Ben and his weight. Like, here's my thing. You can taunt Big Ben for his weight all you want to. But in the day, he may not have been the most physically, you know, in shape player. But he was a future. He's a future first battle Hall of Famer. This dude is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. So I would never question his preparation. Him being big worked out for him. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. I think that people kind of get mad at Ben Rollsberger because they feel like that he's kind of doing the bare minimum. Whereas you have stories about Tom Brady, you know, always drinking some special Kool Aid or whatever, uh, the vanilla ice cream, avocado ice cream. Who, who is eating that? Come on, man. <laughs> but either way, I actually did, you know, own up to my Steelers pick. I, I, it was around like week five last year. You know, I said that look, Steelers looking pretty good. You know, they still can't choose us to lose every single week. Hey, man, you know, it is what it is. But either way, JT, thanks for coming on the show, man. Um, tell people a little bit about your channel, you know, what you um, bring to the content creating community because it's been a while since you've been on the channel. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, preseason's back in effect. Glad to have that. Didn't have that last year. Been covering that pretty heavy. We've been putting more emphasis on college football lately. We tried to drop – I tried to drop a little uh, – I try to drop a college football upload like at least once a week, you know, try to get like a couple of videos out there. They do pretty good. You know, we're just covering NFL college football. It's the perfect channel for the diehard football fan. And we have figured out a way to properly, you know, get all the videos on podcasts and platforms. And over the next couple of months, I'm working on upgrading my equipment. So now every video I make will be, you know, clips from a live stream, hopefully. Got it, got it. Now, what made you become a Pittsburgh Steelers fan? You have to answer that question for the viewers out there. Um, honestly, I don't even remember. So, like, uh, how? Because you're, from, you're from Jacksonville, okay? Well, so, I was like, well, it was no way in hell I was going to be a Jaguars fan. <laughs> so, it this. So this was 11 years ago. I was like eight years old. I was watching Super Bowl with my grandpa. What Super Bowl is this? This was when they play Arizona, and I just liked the colors. You get what I'm saying? And I had a teacher who was a Steelers fan. I forgot what her name was, but she was my music teacher, and she was always talking about you know. So I checked them out, and I just ended up liking the team, and I ain't you know never changed up since. That's actually the the exact same way I became a Packers fan. I became a a real football fan in 2013, the year Aaron Rodgers actually broke his collarbone, then came back versus Chicago, you know, and. Pretty much ripped their hearts out. But, yeah, I mean, I wasn't a huge football fan. I just kind of looked at, you know, the jerseys. And I at the time, my favorite color was green. So I said, oh, Green Bay, you know, pretty cool. You know, I liked it, the yellow. And so I said, you know, I'm going to be a Packers fan. So that's how I'm a Green Bay Packers fan. I try to, you know, keep that on the low because people think that I'm biased, you know. But it is what it is. Um, Tell me one thing you've learned from making content on YouTube, you know. Is there anything that you've learned from that or any life lessons you gained? Heck yeah, man. It's just the fact that, you know, like you can't, you can't let, you can't let people on the internet get to you at the end of the day. You just got to realize that it's the internet and keep doing what you're doing. Because like, no matter how great a content you think you're going to put out, you always going to have some haters down there. Like I made the Zach Wilson video. Somebody talking about some one. Cause I made an analogy. You know, I like to use my relationship analogy. Dude going to talk about something I got relationship i got girl problems 
it's just an analogy. Then he talking about some Mitchell Trubisky was never balling out in training camp. Never said Mitchell Trubisky was balling. Now I was just saying the Chicago let me, let media. Me the Chicago let me, let me media interject media. really quickly. They will take one little thing you say and nitpick that one thing. Exactly. It's, it's not even it like, like a cliche. It's just like a cliche. Like, I, I even wonder, do people even watch the videos like my rig prediction? I'm like, bro, like, I just uploaded this and you already criticized. And you, you didn't even, people don't even give, people don't even allow you to give your full explanation. You get what I'm saying? And then like me, you know, like, I don't really get that many hate comments. You know, like, I may get some people who disagree, but, you know, like, they understand where I'm coming from. I will never give no points that nobody can't see, you know, like, the light in front of it. You get what I'm saying? It's just that around this time, this is why I get more criticism than most because, you know, like, it's the off season. Everybody thinks their team's Super Bowl contender. Everybody thinks they're going to the playoffs. Remember Jets fans last year thought they were going to the playoffs? Huh. <laughs> it's crazy, man. And then this where that's when, you know, if I put out a hot take, it's not a hot take, you know, like it's just it's just logical, you know, like when people were coming for Justin Herbert last year. I think I sometimes sometimes the honest opinions are Kind of the hot takes because I think that a lot of people hate the truth. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I was trying to tell people like Justin Herbert is not going to be a bust. Like you never seen this dude play, and you already want to crown this man the crown jewel. Same thing with Tua. As a matter of fact, people out there saying that Tua was the better pick than Justin Herbert. We see how that's turning out right now, right? Same thing with Zach Wilson. You know, you got people bashing Zach Wilson, praising Justin Fields and Trey Lance. But at the end of the day, we never going to know what those guys look like until we finally see those guys in the actual real regular season game. And that's just why I tell people, you know, people call me a conservative and things like that. But at the end of the day, you know, like, I'm just more of a logical person. I don't like the, you know, just go ahead and throw those predictions out there when I don't really have great evidence. You feel me? I let the play speak for itself and go off there. Yeah, I feel you. Last question before we get into some topics right here. Of course, guys, I, I failed to mention, mention this before. We're covering the AFC North in this episode. We're going to talk about the Ravens, of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Cleveland Browns. But before we, you know, dive into all the football side of things regarding the AFC North, Give me your three favorite athletes right now and three favorite athletes that are retired. It could be any sport, football, basketball, you know, anything. I know you're a Jameis Winston fan. Yeah, Jameis, Allen Iverson. Uh, I love Allen Iverson. I love either him. Andrew Wiggins or uh, either Andrew Wiggins. I see you making that face, man. I was a big Andrew Wiggins fan just because it's just 2K, really. Is, is um, Ben Rosberger up there for you? Nah, I probably I probably say that's about it. You know, Jameis Winston, Allen Iverson. Oh, it. Oh, who is it? Who is it? it oh man, I think it pro. Oh, I can't really think of it right now, man. I probably say like oh Jarvis Landry. Nah, Cam Newton. Cam Newton. Lamar Jackson. Like Lamar Jackson. Like it's Lamar. either okay. So it's Jameis Winston. Josh Gordon, Andrew Wiggins, Lamar Jackson, Cam Newton. Yeah, people don't people don't remember this, but this past decade, you you asked people the question: Who was the most marketable player? The kids. It's not Brady. It was Cam Newton. Remember when Cam Newton was in his physical prime for 2011? He had the Under Armour endorsement, right? Everybody had the Cam Newton cleats, even though I don't prefer wearing those cleats because those aren't the most appropriate cleats to wear for football. They was always effing my ankles up. You had him always in these commercials and things like that. When he won MVP, you had the dab going on. So like, I felt like Cam Newton was one of the more remarkable, rememberable players of this past decade for us. 2010, Auburn, you get what I'm saying? Carolina, even he had his fair share of criticism and all how he overcame it. Yeah, Cam Newton's hey. one of my favorite athletes of all time. Uh, no doubt about mm -hmm. it. We'll leave that uh, pretty much right there. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. 
This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows. Or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Lurt Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out.